Hey guys, what's happening? So, uh, making some progress here on the Celeritas. Um, I have all this all printed out already. It's already already all working. But I want to show you the uh, design here uh, before I go out to the uh, workbench and show you how I put it together and wire it up. But uh, so I think I mentioned previously that I'm going to be using two 120 millimeter blower fans. Um, because I'm not using a part cooling fin or part cooling fan on the uh, hot end, so all the cooling, part cooling for for uh, PLA and PETG would be uh, on this right here. Obviously, you don't need part cooling for ABS. Um, so yeah, these uh, this is just my first design, um, but I want to make it modular. So in case this design doesn't work right these little uh, extension tubes are here, I can quickly just pop new ones on and try different designs. So, like, also depending on, like, what part I'm doing. So, like, if I have a different part, I might want a more specific cooling pattern, you know, so I can pop these off and put new ones on there. Um, but, yeah, because I'm trying to make this thing obviously ultra lightweight, I don't want a part cooling fan. That's just going to add weight to the uh, hot end extruder system, which I made another video about. Um, let's see, that's that one that one up there so that was my previous video the uh, hot end system um, so the the sketch you see right here this is actually the, the heated bed so that's kind of how I do when I design this I kind of designed around my heated bed and this is my belt drive system so I measured this and kind of so I know what shape I need to make it to make everything clear um, so I might put extension tubes in here maybe uh, I'm gonna see how these these cool um, I'll show the inside how it looks on the inside to kind of distribute the air a little bit better because if you don't well let me show you this real fast um section analysis here or, um, so if you don't put like some kind of channels in here right then um let me turn the sketches off so you can see better here so if you don't put sort of like any sort of cooling channels all the air would come out one spot so i need to channel the air once it hits here i want to channel a spot through here I want to channel some air through here. See this spot right here comes through, and then I also want to make sure I don't, you know, the very uh, back part of the bed here, which I think it's uh, where is it? I don't know. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Um, let me turn the sketches off. All right, so that's the uh, the tube design, and let me show you the inside of the box here. So it's basically a uh, box that fits in here. So each of the, the 112 meter fans, uh, let me get the other box off. All right, so you can see because the, the, the things are sort of asymmetrical, the way I have, they're kind of like not, it depends how you flip them around, you know, so they're not exactly asymmetrical. So even though they kind of look like they're, the holes are almost even, but they're not. So, um, so where do I have the blower fingers? Oh, here either. There you go. So you can kind of see uh, how I have them lined up. So this cool thing I, I I love I love Fusion 360. It's uh how you can just download parts into it, and then I can actually design around the actual part. So I try to make this in here nice and tight, so there's no gaps, and it's actually works pretty good. Um, All right, and then I have the extension tube. See this rear that comes off it? I'll take the analysis off here. And it comes up, a couple screws here. And that's the changeable tip, as you can see. I can just pop this tip off. And uh, there's some locking screws in there. Uh, you don't really need the locking screws. Um, it will actually fit on there. You don't even, I mean, it's not going to blow off there. Um, so I can probably get rid of this in the future builds. Just because the f I have it, the, the clearance so tight, it just slides on there. Uh, all right, let me go to the workbench and I'll show you how I have this wired up. So, the idea was to wire it up to a uh, one of my hotbed uh, MOSFETs, not the hotbed, the uh, hot end. So there's on my uh, Monster Eight board, there's multiple uh, hot ends. You can have actually up to three hot ends. So, uh, one of the hot ends. So instead of you, you can't drive this. I think I go into it a little bit more on my workbench, but like I said, I already have all this stuff printed out and done already. So, but I wanted to show you on this part first, so you can kind of get of an idea what I'm doing. Um, 
But what I was saying is you can't draw um, these two big fans. You can't hook that up to like, like a fan outlet on the on the board because you'll overload the pin, the processor pin. You know, you'll you'll burn out your processor or burn out that part of the processor because this can't. This thing draws like. Um, I think it was like like half an amp or like a little bit more. I mean, you're going to overload the processor and burn it out. So what you want to do is you want to drive it off the MOSFET, you know, straight off the power supply and uh, something that can actually handle it. And the hot end can definitely handle it. You're putting uh, enough wattage through it. Um, it's being controlled by a MOSFET transistor and not the uh, right directly right off the CPU. Um, all right, let me go out and show it to you. All right, I got the pan box mounted. And so my thought was I'm actually going to have this running off one of the extra hot ends um, just because this thing actually pulls like about 650 uh, milliamp, which would definitely overdo the uh, a fan output. So a fan output is not driven by a MOSFET. It runs directly off the processor, like a pin on the processor. So, I mean, these are pretty big fans. They're 120 millimeters. So... Um, that's, I mean, I, that's going to overdo the actual, uh, the pin, which then you could fry the processor. So this is going to be controlled by a, um, a hot end. Like there's three different, there's, I think there's like four different hot ends you can set up on this, uh, MOS rate. Same thing with like a, you know, like an octopus. So here it is. I have it connected to my, my bent power supply and give it some power. This is how I know it's actually, I wanted to, I wanted to see how much it was actually pulling. So it started up, it went up to about... Seven something and went down to about 650 milliamp. Um, yeah, this thing blows some serious air out though. Yeah, that's gonna be awesome. So once I get the ductwork done, it's gonna have the ductwork is gonna come up out of here. And down and direct it. So um, in that previous video, I showed you the uh, turn this off. It's kind of noisy. And I gotta fish the wires down into the uh, board. So I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna fish this wire down. So I've already put ferrules on there. So and then I will show you how to reprogram it. All right. So I'm all done with this. All the wire will be nice and clean. See, I have fingerboard in there. I designed fingerboard in there. So all the wires will be nice and clean and wrapped in fingerboard. Um, so here are the three extra outputs for the hot end. So I'm only going to be using one. But on this last one, I'm actually going to just dedicate that for the, the part cooling fans. So I'm going to put that in there. Um, so what, these fan pins, they run on the processor. I have a heat sink on the processor right now. but So they're not run off a MOSFET. right? They're run directly off the actual an output on, 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 the, on the CPU. So um, here's a MOSFET. Right here. So a MOSFET is just an electrical controlled switch. So the MOSFET basically tells this thing to turn on. So then the main current is actually coming from the power supply. Like a fuse source in the power supply. So it's not being run through the processor. The processor's, processor is just controlling this thing, telling it to turn on and off. So I can actually run a lot more power through it. So that's how you're able to run a hot end and basically the, the heater bed. Well, I guess if you're watching this video, you're probably most likely an advanced 3D printer user or an enthusiast. Um, all right, so to change this, I need to, um, you know, here like where the fan fan puts are right here. Some of the fans. There's not actually that's one of the issues also with the Monster 8 is that the Octopus has a lot more fan outputs, more options for fans. Um, so what I'm using here is hopefully you can see that is I'm using. PA3. So in the fan selection, I'm going to actually, the pinout will be PA3 for fan output. So I'm going to be enabling this MOS out right here. Watch it, it's one, two, three. So this is probably the bed, and these will be the three hot ends right here. So, all right, got to go in a clipper and do that. I'm not going to even show you how, I mean, it's pretty basic, just changing the pin number. Um, yeah, like once I get this thing finished, I can go through the whole step by step build process. Like I said, I'm still kind of figuring this out on my own, too. Alright, you can see that right there. PA3 fan. That is the part cooling fan. This should be the default for... Um... Alright, let's see how this works. Bring it down to my... 
touch screen here. I might get a well, no, it's PA3 is when you use for something else. I shouldn't have it defined, so. Alright, let's do more. Where is the fan? Here we go. Part cooling fan. Ah, look at that. That's 50%. Put that little slider here. You can see that in one frame. Yeah, I don't know if I can. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, with this much air, I don't think I'm going to have. Like, the whole point was to not have a part cooling fan up here to reduce weight. So, I mean, this thing is tiny, this little hot end. I made another goal. The other video was about this one. Yeah, with this much air, man. And then also, like I said, that, that Air Express heater block that I was going to design out of aluminum. Um, but actually, I had another user suggest. Um, I mean, doing this out of ABS plastic too. So that might be a better solution. But I still need to create. I, need, I still need a high flow hot end though. So I guess I could buy like a volcano type hot end, or and then do some ABS. Or I could just machine my, my machine my own um, that has like the angles. So the the point was to direct air to hit this and down into the the nozzle. So. Um, yeah, but the guy is, I, 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 what's funny, I don't know, sometimes I, it's, that's why it's great posting these videos. I actually didn't think about having some kind of like plastic. So instead of actually having the nozzle, the heater brake do it, like have a, like a, like a, a, a plastic way to direct the air into it. So either or it would work, I guess. All right, cool. All right, one step closer. All right, awesome.